Hey guys, welcome to that pedal show. Dan here. Mick here. Hello. Um, there's no red light on on that camera, is that? There's not. Shouldn't be a red light on on that camera, should there? I had to put some tape on it for a shoot last week. Ah. I had a bit of a. There you are. There we go. Ah. Oh. Now there's a red light on. We're happy. Um, Mick here. Hello. <laughs> Thing is, though, if Mick didn't do that, the shows wouldn't work. Shows wouldn't happen. Well, yeah, I'm just used to seeing two red lights looking at me. And the other nice red light was over in the corner, the DB meter, Daniel, on your perfectly formed, uh, what's that, when you add the... Um, e add nine. That's the add nine to mm -hmm. the E major chord. Mm -hmm. At the end, when you played that chord, it hit 100 dB perfectly. Magic. Nice. So it's, it's mo we're moving in here today. We are. Yeah, we are. great. It sounds good, too. So today's show, I wanted to have a look at parallel gain staging. There's been a couple of really interesting pedals uh, that have come out, and it's a really fascinating thing to look at because some pedals do it like internally, just with the way that they um, are designed, but there's a couple of pedals that you can do some really clever things with, and then I thought we'd have a look at... Uh, we we'll throw some other things in the mix and try and make, make some sounds ourselves. So let's have a mix explanation of series and parallel then. Okay, here we go. <laughs> right. Uh, our signal from our guitar, in series, it would hit one pedal and then travel along and hit another pedal, another pedal, all right? So if we have two gain stages and they're operating in series, the guitar hits that one, and the gain from that one will hit, go into the next one. In parallel, the signal is split at some point, and then that signal hits both pedals independently, and then the output of those pedals is mixed back in together, and then that's what you get. Uh, cascading, isn't it? They cascade into one another, the two gain stages, and that's important because if you have... In series. Yeah, yeah, in series. So if you, let's say, for example, you had a boost and an overdrive, mm -hmm. in series, if you turn the boost up, the overdrive overdrives more. That's right. Exactly that's why right. it's important. Isn't exactly it? right. Which is great because that's gain staging and that's what we that's what we really love and that's what we talk about all the time. Um, however, in parallel, if you turn that boost up, nothing happens to the overdrive, it just stays the same. You just Correct. get more of the boost. Correct. And the the kind of assumption might be on a lot of if you're not really into pedals and you're not using pedals all the time and you haven't spent ages um, experimenting, you might just assume that that's the way it works in series. You turn the boost up and you just get more boost. You don't realize that it's affecting this overdrive stage as well. Yeah. So you, I think you, the questions in, in the TPA, by the way, thanks for all your questions. Yes, thank you very much. It's quite often the questions that we get reflect that point of view sometimes. Sure. So yeah, th that's the main difference. Yeah. Yeah, because as soon as, um, if you look at... Uh, an overdrive circuit, um, so lots of overdrive circuits will use those cascading gain stages inside as part of the design. One um, gets louder and that will clip. It, it goes beyond what the headroom in the, in the next gain stage has and that causes the clipping yeah. and so on and so on. And that's what gives us that overdrive sound. It's exactly how your amp works. Exactly. If you've got right. a couple exactly of valves right. in the front front end of your amp, it hits the first uh, half of. Hang on, am I going to get into this? Yeah, okay. A normal 12AX7 <laughs> valve is a dual triode, right? So it's got two halves. Normally, what will happen is it will hit the first half, that will give some amplification, it will hit the second half, more amplification. And then if there's another gain stage yet again, there might be another um, valve. So you've got four stages of. Of potential amplification from each from two uh, dual triode valves, and then just as just what Dan says, as the signal goes through, it just gets more and more distorted. Yeah, with with them turned up, with them, yeah. But you can, um, and the great thing about the way that these things are designed, the amps, is that the, so what the designer will do is he will tailor the, or she she um, will tailor or they <laughs> what the sounds. Uh, for example, the first gain stage might be really big, but they might limit the the bottom end or the top end, you know, and, and going through the, the gain stages. And that's what, at the end, once they've done all their manipulation, gives you the outcome that you need. 
Now, if we take those game stages and, and then we go from the cascading serial thing into parallel, what you get, you there, there are some great potentials there for some really unique sounds, but there are some things to be aware of. Um, so if we, if we jump in, so the first sound I was playing there is the sound I created with the Angry Driver. Now this is the pedal that was done in collaboration with Boss and JHS. And when this came out, I thought, man, that's really cool. So you've got, you've got two circuits in here. You've got the JHS Angry Charlie, um, which we were first introduced to by our um, different Annie Timmons. Oh, I'm going to have to get up. Sorry, dude. It's getting more difficult, you know. As the years advance, Dan, things like getting up, especially with uh, Achilles tendonitis, which I have <laughs> currently. That's for Andy. Um, yeah, actually, I, I don't know if we could timeline on that, whether we were... Anyway, no, we didn't. We we had the um, we had the uh, Angry Charlie before, or had, they were using it concurrently. I think. Right. Okay. Anyway, it doesn't matter. Anyway, and, and Andy loves it so much it became the basis of the design for the AT pedal. So it's and that again is based on um, the is it the, the governor? Um, it's supposed to be a cranked Marshall sound. Yeah, yeah, that that sort of thing. Whatever you equate that to be. So that's the Angry Charlie side, and then you've got. The Boss Blues Driver, which is a classic, um, you know, we've used it ever since the, the, the show started. So if we have a listen to those turns in sound, uh, now, so sounds in turn. This, uh, am I right in saying this gives us the handy opportunity to hear them in series and in parallel? Indeed. So we can do that. And we can yeah. indeed. We can indeed. Great. So you'll see uh, the Andrew Driver has these really cool dual knobs, dual concentric knobs. And the top pots are the uh, Angry Charlie circuit, and the bottom is the Blues Driver circuit. So what we can do, if we first of all have a listen to the Blues Driver. This is just the Blues Driver, yeah? Yep. Uh, feeling 335 at the moment today. It may not last, depending if it will be in tune for me. Okay, so yeah, so both amps we're using please today. Please be in tune, please be in tune. <laughs> we have the Super Duchess uh, V140 by Victory and the Matchless HC30. <clears throat> Beautiful. Okay, so this is the blues driver on its own. Lovely. All right, and this is the angry Charlie. Glorious. Nice. Got, right. We've got a lovely, I'm just going to turn the reverb down a bit, give ourselves a bit of an easier job. Only a little bit, mind. <laughs> like a lot of reverb. Um, yeah. Glorious range of frequencies today. Yes. Lots of bass, lots of treble. I like it. Yeah, yeah. it's happening. So what did you feel between the, the two? What was the difference? Um, Apart from just more distorted. Yeah. The, so the JB has um, like a more dynamic range in terms of the harder you hit it, uh, the louder the guitar gets a little bit. With the extra overdrive, it's more compressed from the Angry Charlie side. Yep. So it's a bit but more buttery under the fingers. And that is the key element to understanding what happens when you mix these things in parallel. Right. right? So what, first of all, what we're going to do is we're going to put them in series. Yep. We're going to put the Angry Charlie... Oh, sorry, we'll put the Blues Driver into the Angry Charlie. Yep. I'm okay. glad you did it that way around. <laughs> okay, so we'll, we'll stay in E. It's a good country key. So, this is the blues driver into the Angry Charlie. <laughs> And 
And this is the Angry Charlie into the Blues Driver. <laughs> So what I'll do... What were you doing there? What were you, what were so you doing? You, this is a... Th so this is the knob that gives you all the different combinations, right? Yep. So I was just going between the, the Angry Charlie by itself. Yep. And then I was putting the Blues Driver after it. Yep. And the first time I was putting the Blues Driver into it. Okay. What I'll do, I'll flip between the Blues Driver going into the Angry Charlie and the Angry Charlie going into the Blues Driver, okay? So this is the, ang this is the Blues Driver into the Angry Charlie. Okay, in series. In yep. series, that's right. <laughs> So you'll see that if I'm with the with the blues driver after the Angry Charlie, the blues driver is giving us that basically it's it's EQ, it's it's character. The Angry Charlie is pushing the blues driver, but we get more bottom end, more top end. However, if we swap that, and the Angry Charlie is the last thing we see, then that the majority of it's the EQ and character is coming from the Angry Charlie, and the blues driver is pushing that, just giving it more gain. Yeah. Right? So that's what happens in series. Yes. And actually, uh, I'm assuming that the Angry Charlie into the Blues Driver was just giving me a bit more, a uh, tiny bit more headroom, a bit more clarity, whereas the Blues Driver into the Angry Charlie was just slightly mushier. Yeah. So now what I'm going to do, I'm going to switch between the uh, Blues Driver into the Angry Charlie and then I'm going to switch between that and then being in parallel, okay? Only because that's what I can see from here. Yeah, driver, yeah. All right? <laughs> so, again, here is the... This is the Blues Driver into the Angry Charlie. Right. And and then I'm going to switch to the parallel. Yeah, cool. Yeah, all right. Let's go to G. Was that literally just series in parallel? Literally series in parallel. And it got louder and more, um, less compressed in the parallel mode. So half of the signal was louder and less compressed. Yeah. The other half of the signal was the same. Well, I mean, so it's exactly what happens when you take those, those cascading gain stages and separate them. So what I'm going to do, I'll go to parallel and I'm going to turn the boss side down, turn it back up. I'm going to turn the, the angry Charlie side down, turn it back up. Okay. Nice. Do that again, that's nice. Groovy? I think so. Not entirely sure what was happening, but... Okay, so all I did was, when I turned the the boss side down, it just went back to being the Angry Charlie, all right? Yep. And th that really compressed, yeah, okay. that sound. When I turned the Blues Driver back up, the presence and depth came back into it, and I turned the Angry Charlie down, 
and it became just a blues driver on its own. But so those circuits are happening independently of each other, and that's the point. Now, one great thing that you can do when you have this sort of control is then you can say, okay, we've been looking at gain, and what about EQ? Why don't we make the Angry Charlie a bit warmer, mm. a bit more, uh, we'll turn the gain up, make it sustain a bit more, and the blues driver side, I'm going to make it a little bit, uh, add a bit more treble, mm. a bit more bite to it. So what we should see on the Angry Charlie side, it's going to be very compressed. Yep. Their initial attack is going to be, you know, the same as the rest of the, yep. the chord. However, on the blues driver side, what we're going to see is this spike in the attack, but then that's going to quickly, yeah. uh, th there will be no sustain on that. It'll come back down to the chord. So we'll have the, a front end attack on the note and then the sustain of the Angry Charlie. So if I turn the blues driver side down. Cool. And then can we hear that series unparalleled parallel while we're doing it? Sure, absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah that'd, absolutely. Be that'd be interesting. Okay. So I'll set up the Angry Charlie first yep. to be a bit warmer, yep. a bit more sustain. Cool, huh? <laughs> yeah. So for my personal thing, I much, much, much prefer that where it gets less compressed and you can hear the note because you can have a lot of gain on. Yeah. Which is there's a lot of gain on there. Loads of gain on there. Um, you know, for us, there's a, there's a lot of gain for us. Um, and yet you still retain the note yeah. dynamic. Yeah, absolutely. And but as soon as it went back to being serious, that was all gone. Yeah. And you were back into compressed. Back into crazy compressed, and crazy that, gain. That is definitely that exact moment when you're playing and you step on your other pedal for a solo and it just disappears. Exactly. That's that's that that's moment. It. Yep. Yep. Cool. That's really that's interesting. Yeah. Very interesting. And yep. the number of pedals that can do a parallel signal chain are very few, aren't they? There's but there's a few about. Um the multi drive from Empress is the it's probably the most powerful version of, of parallel gain stacking that I've seen. First of all, their overdrive pedals sound immense, mm. but they give us three separate circuits. Cool. Um, so they've given us a an overdrive, a distortion, and a fuzz. You have a play for a bit, mate. Okay. I'm interested for a tweak. Um, never le lean your uh, back-angled peghead Gibson precariously up against a... Never. Never do Never that. do it. Never do that. Yeah, because that's how headstocks get broken. But I've run out of space. We've ordered some new guitar racks, and uh, it'll be fine. A drunk person falls into it, or it just slides on the on the bottom. Oh, it slides. Yeah. Okay, I yeah, see. Yeah, usually slides. But I, I mean, I think it's all right. <laughs> okay, so what we'll do, we're going to um, if I turn all these down. Yeah. To start with. And then one at a time, if you turn them up. Yeah. Uh, and then just get this level of gain. Yeah. And then what I want to talk to you about is this really cool filter. Filter. Cool. Which is it is the filter off at the moment? The filter is off at the yeah. moment. Cool. Okay. Let's have a listen to each of the uh, each of the circuits then. Okay. I'm in two today.
So there's our three different circuits, okay? Now what I want you to do, just using the volume knobs, if you can turn them up and just find a blend of those three sounds that you like. I will. Uh, there, there are also three modes of distortion, by the way. Yes. Um, we've got it on lead currently. Okay. Can, I, can I hear the crunch one? I think that's gonna be the one I like the most. Okay. Just hear how different that is from the overdrive. Okay, for the purposes of demonstration, we will go with the lead one, how okay. you had it, just to make the point, but I think the crunch one's much nicer. Anyway. Cool, all right. Uh, right, so uh, a mix of the three then, yeah? Yep, yep, just find a sound that you like with the cool. three. Right? So what we're getting is elements yeah, of all this is coming literally through. Literally could tweak all day. You tweak all day. But, but one of the things that's uh, really interesting about this approach is the filters. So what we can do, we've got a, there's a master EQ on the output, but we can do a low pass or a high pass filter. Yes, it's quite um, quite aggressive too. It's quite aggressive. Yeah, it, can, you, can you change it inside at all? Do you know? Uh, I'm not sure. Choose between three flavors. No, 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 no. Uh, high pass or low pass filter for this section. Only the high frequencies and low frequencies from another. Blah, blah, blah. Cut off frequency is 500 hertz. Interesting. Mm. Super key guitar frequency, 500 hertz. Um, so the idea with this is we can say, I don't want, I don't want the harsh top end of the fuzz. I just want the low end. Yeah. But I want the I want the top end of the overdrive. And the distortion will leave full frequency. So then you can blend, you know, that sort of thing. Should we have a mess about with that then? Yeah. So let's if we if we um if we just put the low pass on the fuzz. I fondly remember the zoom 505. Uh, unit. To be fair, the Zoom 505 never sounded that good, <laughs> even in the full-on high-pass filter uh, mode. Uh, interesting. Okay, and then we put the low-pass filters on. Um, let's. Can we test my theory, Dan, of all pedals sound best? At two o'clock? With all the controls at two o'clock, apart okay. from the master volume. Can we just try that? Of course. Go for it. Uh, 
That's another win for Mr. Taylor. <laughs> See you next week. <laughs> <laughs> oh, magic. That sounded great, actually. That sounded really good. All right, let's start there then. Let's keep it on that. Okay. And then I'll just have a mess about with the filters yeah. and see what we can hear, yeah? yeah. As soon yeah. as we're familiar with that sound now and it sounds pretty magic. Yep. Yeah. Can I suggest, though, yes. that we, you, um, if we start with one and turn the other two down so that we can hear yeah. like the filter on the on the, the fuzz or, or the drive or whatever. <laughs> Absolutely brilliant. It's amazing, isn't it? So in addition, um, as you probably saw there, you've got three key frequencies of the mid. Mm. So if you want your tube screamer, you can boost 500 and cut the low end yeah. and the high end. And then you can, you know, you can have your, you know, lots of gain on the overdrive section, but then you can, you can clean up um, the fuzz and... Yeah. You know what I mean? So one one thing I did there was um, have all the bottom end on the fuzz, mm. put the, uh, you know, cut all the high frequencies off the fuzz and then just left the high frequencies on the distortion. Right. I quite often find that um, when you get the, the, the treble frequencies really overdriving and distorting, mm -hmm. if then you've got all that on the bass strings as well, that's where you lose so much definition. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, you've got loads of, Distortion on the on the bottom end of a fuzz, you would certainly lose definition there. But that was quite interesting. And then just filling out the middle with the overdrive. It's a really cool way to do that it. It's exceptional. Yeah, it's it's lovely. And is it you can, new? Or is oh, it? No, it's been old. around for a while. No, it's, is it? it's, yeah, it's been around for a while. But I think the you know, the thing with, with, with a drive like this, it's not, you know, it's not volume gain and tone. You need to have some sort of understanding of the different the, the, yeah, it's not plug and yeah, play, is no, it? No, exactly. You've got to have a, at least be excited by the potential of what you can do with signal paths in parallel. Just before we move on, mm. can I just try something? Yeah, yeah. I'm kind of interested to know if with that EQ control. Yeah. Can we listen? Can I? Sorry to do a tube screaming thing, but I'm going to do it. Can we hear this? Yes. And I want to get this to sound. Yeah, yeah, Similar. yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm just going to guess, right? I'm going to put that, I'm going to push that 500. Yep. Cut the lows, cut the highs. Yep. Um, let's see how close that is straight out of the bat, uh, off the bat, out of okay. the gate. Um, see how close that is to the old, to the old TS. Sure. Yeah? Yep. So here's the tube screamer, I think. It's 
So frequency wise, I think you're there, but what's it missing? Um, bit of compression. A little bit of compression, but also have a listen to that. So there's a, there's a, in the Tube Screamer. That was a guess on the EQ. There's, Not bad. Magic. You'd be interested, th interesting to see what the uh, audio Most, yeah, says. Yeah, right. But if you have listened to the Tube Screamer, listen to the way that the certain frequencies break up before others, right? It, it almost feels as if there's a clean bit in the Tube Screamer. You know what I mean? It, but there isn't, but you've got the way it's designed is certain frequencies break up other, rather than others. Yeah. So again, here's the Tube Screamer. There's more overdrive in the low end. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. and there is more low end in general, actually. So I wonder if that's... So what I want to do, I mean, I think for, the, for overdrive and, and, and feel, that's great. But what I'm going to do, I'm going to put the distortion on mild. Yeah. Right? I'm going to turn the gain down and then turn up. Uh, if I, let's see, I might try just the low pass filter. No, yeah. actually, no, I'll, I'll go, I'll just go the, the number yeah. to start with. All right, have a go. It is very mild in mild. It's very mild. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Not bad. Close. Yeah, it's but a bit it's louder. See, I think the uh, multi drive, but yeah. Oh, well, I turned it right down. But do you see the difference when I added that cleaner, blended that cleaner section in as well. It, it the tube screamer isn't doing that. And if we had, no. uh, if I could tailor the EQ on that, we might have got a bit closer. But it gives you that sense that, um, you know, as you as you dig in, certain things are overdriving. Yeah. You know, um, yeah. It's, it's, the, it's the way it affects the overdrive in the Tube Screamer, by the way. So um, certain frequencies are get the gain in different ways than the bass frequencies. A lot of people think there's a parallel signal path. I don't believe there is. No, no. So uh, just to clear that up. Yep. Um, blue and interesting. That, that is absolutely banging. Yeah, I, you know, that in a studio, Yeah. I mean, you, you, don't, you don't need much else. You would struggle in a live situation, wouldn't you? Because... Well, not you wouldn't struggle, but you'd end up only using it for a couple of things. Yeah, well, you don't. It's you not you know. It's tweak the whole time. As as powerful as it is, you've got yeah. state A and state B that you can switch between, and you can have any combination of those three circuits on for state A and again for state B. Um, so you can have your you know set up your crunch sound, and then your your heavier sound is is a combination of that with whatever whatever else. But yeah, it's 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 really really interesting. Um, so. Yes, look at the anchor driver, look at the, at the Empress. Now, what I thought we'd do is have a go at creating some sounds of our own. Some parallel sounds of some our own. Parallel Just sounds before of our we own. do that, I'm trying to think of a state that starts with B. I've got one that starts with A. In America? Yeah. Um, Alabama. Uh, Bama Slama. British Columbia is Canada, isn't it? Yeah. Yes. Uh, uh, the New York. York? <laughs> the New York. Uh, please list the states beginning with B. Below, I no, I can't think of any. What's what's brought you there? New Mexico. You said you've got state A and state B. 
So I'm like, we're in Alabama and then we want to go to the California. Very good. Albuquerque. <laughs> Actually, that's not a state, is it? It's funny. In America, you learn states. You really learn them. I guarantee that 95% of people in the UK couldn't name the three counties that that border them. Uh, uh, three counties where? In the UK. You, what county oh, do you yes. live in? Wiltshire. What's north of Wiltshire? Northshire. <laughs> What's west of Wiltshire? Westshire. I prove my point. We've got Swindon. Hang on, no. Swindon's Wiltshire. not a county. <laughs> Gloucester? <laughs> Gloucestershire, yeah. Gloucestershire. Good, good shout. But you also border... Uh, Oxfordshire. Oxfordshire, is, is that... Okay. I would have thought so, on the north side, don't you, yeah. Wiltshire? It's, it's, got it. got it's to, all it? Shire. Yeah. yeah. South of Wiltshire? London. He is from Love Australia, Asia. but can you name all the states in the in the in Australia? Yeah, go on then. Uh, Queensland, New South Wales, Australian Capital Territory, Western Australia, South Australia. You've got uh, Victoria, and you also have Tasmania. I thought he was going to forget Victoria. Did you say Northern Territories? Yeah. Okay, fine, fine. Okay, good. So you know Australia. Yeah, but those states are big. Yeah, yeah. I mean they're. And there's only about six of them. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Anyway, uh, sorry about the state tangent. Most most people in the UK don't know the counties, is all I'm saying. But in America, you get taught states. If What's the see. home counties? They are, what, Bedfordshire, uh, Surrey. Are Why they? are they called the home counties? Like beds I, I and home. Berkshire. Berkshire, yeah, yeah. The posh ones. Yeah, I don't know. Why they're called Alabama the home to Berkshire. Yeah. That's what we're doing. There you go. State A, Alabama. The is for Berkshire. We got there in the end. Be interested to see what makes the edit. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Let's create some... Let's create some sounds. This is the Wetterbox little parallel Oh, mixer no, it's just here. the Wetterbox promo. I know. I true. think we have to stop. Imagine the comments. All he's doing is trying to sell more Wetterboxes. Oh, it's shameless, Dan. <laughs> I could do it... Well, I can tell you what you can do this with. You can do this with any <laughs> splitter. So as long as you split the signal... Yep. Before the overdrive. So you've got the People's Judea in front. <laughs> people's Front <laughs> Judea. Split up. Sorry, we've just hit that point. We've hit that point. We've hit the point. That was really good. Let's bring it back. I oh, I watched, um, what was that? Uh, I have a friend in Rome. God, biggest stickers. That was on last night. Anyway, so... Yes, you don't need a wetter box to do this. You can do this with a splitter to split the signal, then to go into overdrives, and then a mixer at the end. At the end, yeah. The reason that we're using this is because it has, it enables us to blend between the two, but also I need to show you what happens when you have one of those pedals is out of phase, because phase is the other thing we haven't talked about. It's it's very important when you're doing the the, the game thing that pedals are in phase with each other. And when they design these circuits, so, so <laughs> right, the signal... This in, is in phase. Come on, Dan. Right. So in phase, we have in phase. Now, I'm going to go out of phase. I'm going to be switched back in phase. Oh, that's clever. You like that? It's literally the best definition of phase you'll ever see. What happens? So here's a tangential question. Um, go on. Quite slowly, if you don't mind. <laughs> what happens if you? What happens if you do this? Right. Ah. I'm trying to go sort of behind you. Sure. Ever so slightly, but I'm not very good. Not very, you know, it doesn't work for me. So what if you are perfectly behind me, you get um it's a delayed, it's a, it's a delay, basically. And so then you get like a if you're not modulating the time with that delay, you just get this strange comb filter. Yeah. On those frequencies, and the the interesting thing about that, let's say you there's a there's a three millisecond delay between you and me. All right, so if you, oh, so I'm going to go slow. Okay. Right. So let's say that I'm analog, and then Mick has a three second millisecond delay because there's some sort of digital process that's I going on be between. It. You wouldn't be using it. <laughs> I just wouldn't be using. But it. But the interesting thing is, keep going, keep going. Right. So here's the interesting thing. Right. 
Now I'm going to switch phase. You ready? Yeah. You keep going. It's quite hard. Yeah, you do the switching. But uh, so the point with this is, and you <laughs> that I want to see how long we can do this for, is that you can never truly be in phase or out of phase with a with that delay. Yes. You know, so unless you fix it post or with some sort or unless you delay the I'd have to you'd have signal. to delay the original yeah, yeah, delay yeah, signal. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah, it's really interesting. If you have two exact same signals, when they are out of phase, they will cancel each other out completely. But because you you're adding a time delay to that one, that they're never truly out of phase. It's really interesting. The reason I asked him that question is because I think a lot of people break their hearts about being perfectly in phase all the time. And yep. they obviously there is such a thing, but quite often the, it's the phase relationships and the different things that you're using that give it the individual sound. So don't worry too much about being absolutely perfectly in phase all the time. Yep. What you've got on a device that flips the phase is one that sounds better and one that sounds less good. Yes. Yeah. So just go with the one that sounds better. Absolutely. Yeah. Or fuller, should we say? Fuller. Or less full, if that's what you want. I mean, that can be an effect. Mm. It can, it can, th that sort of thing can help. Like two pickups out of phase, for example. Absolutely. Have you ever found a sound where there were two pickups out of phase that you thought was good? Yes. Two. two. I'll give you two examples. One, um, Pete Green, when he plays on on that Les Paul with the two out of phase pickups. But isn't he Sounds just blending one in ever so slightly, right? No, I don't think so. I think the pickup was was fixed and the magnet got put back in the wrong way, something like that. Fill the story okay, out okay, the interesting, right? Killer sound. The other one is Landau's latest record, the first solo on the first track, Out of Phase 335. Sounds amazing. Wow. Listen okay. to this guitar. We never get this guitar out because it's not a brilliant sounding guitar, to be fair. However, yeah, crunch, crunch, crunch. Dental authentic. Um, we never play this guitar. This is my tally that I don't play very regularly. It's quite heavy, so it doesn't sound brilliant. But it does have these pickups, I think, are out of phase. I think it's a really... I think it's a really cool sound. Can you go? What's, what's the neck on the sound sound? Get some overdrive on. It's a great sound. That has too much bottom end for me to be to, to sound like it's out of phase, though. Every out of phase sound that I've heard just sounds so. Or maybe it's because the pickups are so different. You're a Londoner. That it works. Yeah. Um, <laughs> well, you've got a humbucker going on uh, a 250k pot there, so it's really, really dark. Okay. It is out of, I'm pretty sure it's out of, I mean, it sounds out of phase to me. Right. Yeah, okay. Well, cool. Let's hear the tube screamer. Yep. In parallel with a rat. Wow. Yeah. Let's do it. All right. Okay, so, here we go.
Now, I'm just gonna flip phase so you can hear what that sounds like with an out of phase, okay? I won't change anything, just flip phase. Um, there we go. Chip. Now, if we do the same thing, and we're gonna swap the Tube Screamer for the Octava. Now, this is really cool. One thing that I've always struggled with Octavas um, is, maybe not so much this one, but lots of Octavas are very clean. Do you know what I mean? They've got a, they're fuzzy, but there's, there's, they've got a real clean thing to them. Yeah, this has got clean blend. Okay, so. So, uh, this solves that problem. Yeah, uh, okay. If you, right. if you make it, if you make it full, I think this is full octave. This one. Try this. Okay. So what I did there was I kept the Octava where it was and I just blended the overdrive on top of it. Instead of blending between the two, yeah. I kept the Octava because I didn't really want it. It sounded so great. Yeah. I thought, let's put some filth behind it. Yeah, yeah. Because uh, one of the problems with octaves is you, if you play a power chord, it, it just goes to nothing, doesn't it? Yeah. Because it can't deal with it. It's yeah. polyphonic. So yeah, at the end, I was just blending the Octava with the DNM drive. Mega, really mega. Kind of just two seconds of single chords. As I was playing, I was thinking, "Oh my god, it's the wrong guitar." It really does need to be a single coil for the octave to sure. sound great, in my opinion, or at least the sound, the octave sound that we that we associate most closely with. Okay, ready? So. It's cool, isn't it? Yeah, and uh, so you might be saying, well, why don't you just use the octave and the overdrive pedal, but rewind right back to the top of the show. One would affect the other, and it would sound dissonant and weird. And well, have a listen. Yeah. Well, can we do that? Yeah, we can. Sweet. There you go. This is what you get without them being a parallel. It's 
by no means a bad sound. Yep, it's cool. But it's different. Very different. That's the point, isn't it? And this is it together in uh, parallel. <laughs> So I had to put it down. That sounded sound epic. Just much more controllable. Yeah, but he, he, the, it wasn't. It's not one game stage slamming into the other. They're both doing their own thing. It's yeah. So yeah, parallel game staging. If you're looking for something unique, if you're looking to, it, you know, if you're tracking in the studio, and you're on song number five, and you've done all your normal guitar sounds, and they all sound great, but you're looking for something a little bit different. It's a really great way to find something unique without without being without being just a, a novelty. You know mm. what I mean? It can sound. It can you can really tailor something very special. The sculptability is the bit that's, exactly. that's really hammered home to me. Just being able to yeah, sculpt. Yeah, which you you may you know you may want to do with EQ post uh, when you're mixing and stuff like that when you're producing. But to be able to do it in the front of the whole thing and get mm, the sound mm. to an exact point of inspiration in the first place, it's great. I mean, you could get totally lost in it as well, couldn't you? You could oh, yeah. start pulling yeah, yeah. your hair out once you of course. Um, get into all of that. But that is a really nice a really nice way to do it. I wonder if we'll see, I would assume in the comments, most of you are going to list all the parallel effects uh, drive devices that mm. you know of. I don't know of many. I don't think I could name another one apart from these two, mm. but presumably there are others. Yeah. I just think, you know, for what we do, and we talk about game structure a lot, mm. and it's really important to understand this side of it, mm. you know, because game structure is, is everything. Parallel mode in the DNM drive would have been a cool thing, wouldn't it? Would have been a cool thing. Or I, We tried to do it, Yeah, um, but it would have negated the switching stuff that right, we had. Right. Um, yeah. But I can stick that both, you know, either one side of that into a wetter box and we can blend and give that a go. Do it that way. Yeah. But anyway, brilliant, guys. I uh, hope you enjoyed that. Uh, massive thank you to our preferred retailers in the UK and Europe is... Andertons of Guildford in Surrey. And in Australia, one... Would be Pedal Empire of um, Brisbane, Queensland. And for those of you confused about why we don't mention Rift City anymore, um, Rift City stopped their retail business um, unfortunately, they are going to carry on doing some sort of media operation. So oh, cool. Keep an eye on what they're doing there. So best wishes to Joe and yep. everyone at, at, at Rift City. Um, but yeah, they're no longer in the MI retail business, just to make that clear. Brilliant. Also, to everyone that's gone to that pedal show store and bought some backing tracks or bought uh, T-shirts and hats and mugs and pencils and just... We've got new stuff coming up. We do. We do. We've got new stuff coming up, some new designs and some new things. So uh, please go there and uh, spend your cash. I think we can get one of these there as well. Look at that. Shiny. Cold. Let's go. Brilliant, guys. Have a great day and we'll see you soon. Bye. Bye. Bye.